Yeah, we look at that. Yeah, that's it. 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 Over to the left side, so I go back to the bifurcation basically, and then I go to the left now, feeding the catheter to the left one. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's quite sticky in there, the, the catheter tip will go over, and so I've got to pull it back to straighten it and move it. So it's um, sometimes a little bit of a process to get it to the front of the horn. So you're not going all the way to the back of the horn? To the tip of the horn. To the tip, okay. Um, there's a blind end in the tip, but it's not really a blind end. There's a little fallopian tube opening there. So the egg cells actually come in the, enter in the tip of the horn. So now I've just opened the fluid running in. It'll fill up the uterus and then the mucus and content will come out. So this first bit here now, that's most of the... That's most of the embryos yeah. coming out right there, yeah. That little bit there especially, and then the first tube. She's got a little bit of a uterine tone on her, which is a bit interesting. She's got a little bit more fleshy uterus, which... Could be a little bit of an endometritis or a little bit of a non recovered yeah. uterus. Has she got a calf? Or? Yep. She's calved how long ago? Uh, Mid November, 14th of November. <coughs> or even a bit later, actually, it's to end of November. So basically, that's the first rinse there. Now I'll put the air in. Push it over there and slowly until it runs out. So that you see it's pushed through the fluid. So that's basically one flush that you've done, and you do what, like for three? Yeah, I do a second and maybe a third rinse. So this is the first flush that would have taken most of the embryos out, and then now I basically refill it with fluid. And I'll just, what I'll do is I'll twist, turn the uterus back down so that it basically fills up from the bottom end up. And the air that's in there now also pushes up and out first. And that I just don't have an airlock in there either. So it fills up with the fluid and then I'll turn the uterus back up again and then drain it out like we would with a two way catheter. Just milk it out a little bit and you can see then it'll just come running out. And in that process, I'll softly just gently massage it to basically make sure the embryos get mobilized into the fluid and then come rolling out with the fluid so and then I'll put another air in just to make sure I get to drain everything out and um, I might do a third round depending on the size of the uterus and how much mucus is still coming out <coughs> so if there's still debris or mucus coming out I'll just do another rinse another flush and that liquid that you're putting in has got a bit of it's got a detergent type. Yeah, it's got a surfactant in there, so it's got a, a little bit of soapiness in there. Um, but it's all tested and gentle, and it's all tested to be embryo friendly or non toxic. It's got saline as a base, and then it's got that it's got protein in it, and it's got basically a surfactant in there too. Yeah, so, which is basically just a little bit of soapiness to try and wash out and make sure all that mucus dissolves sort of off the wall and then just comes out. So she had seven ovulations? Yeah, on each side. On, so 14 all up? Yeah, she, she, around about. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's hard if they're that big to really count all yeah. of them. But they responded quite well. These yeah. ovaries. She has got two cysts on the left hand side, so, yeah. uh, which I've popped. And that's probably also a reason maybe why her uterus is a bit thickened. Yeah. It's still estrogen sort of that thickens the wall up a bit. But, um, if we have more, more progesterone dominance than estrogen, still get the embryos. So seven on each side um, is a reasonable amount. What's the most you've come across? Uh, yeah, the most I flushed out of one cow was 50, 
52 or 54 viable embryos and then an extra 11 that weren't good in that cow so that was majority grade one and two a uh, few grade twos mostly were grade one so that was 52 it was a bonds mara cow actually it's a composite cow really isn't it so the composite breeds are like the simbras or the bra brafoots and the, 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 the crossbreds actually give the most quantity yeah. And uh, then after that, I had some speckles that gave 40, 41, 42. Um, but out of 5,000 plus that I flushed, there would be under 10 that's given out of 40. Yeah. So the majority good flushes are somewhere in the 20s. You get the odd 30s, and 40s are very rare. And um, the average is about 7. So if you get anything above 7, you're doing well. And uh, for anything that you get above seven, you'll get something that will give you below seven because you've got back to the law of averages, which is basically an average. So the 40s have somebody have a few zeros. Back to the averages, but usually the cows that give you the 40 though, they give you more numbers every time. So they'll be the ones that give you over 20 almost every time. So, so that's genetic, yeah. There's, a, yeah, there's a reserve in there, there's a follicular reserve in the ovary, and the bigger the reserve, the more she'll give right through the head. And I will twist it a little bit and turn it a little bit while I'm doing the air so that I know I've got all the fluid Correct. coming out. Yeah, I'm just wiggling it around now. Make sure all the fluid comes out. Alright, and that's her done. And then the embryos will be caught in the, the yeah, little petri dish or the caught in the filter down there, yeah. So I basically now will just close this tube. The only way they can come out is via this tube. So um, that's closed off at the top here, and then I will put a red pin into it when I take this tube off, which will seal them in there. So they'll be caught in that. And that goes to the microscope and then it will search.